Good morning once again. Looking at um, these issues to do with political parties and their popularity with me, I have got uh, um, an independent-minded so-called political commentator that who for the most part is NLV-leaning, and if you doubt me, you wait for his presentation on this panel. Henry Kasacha, good morning, and thanks for coming late and just organizing my program. Good morning, and thank you for your wonderful comments that are so excellent. And I'm only being honest about who you are. Dr. Kenneth Mona and repentantly NRM, and he in fact does hold an executive position in the NRM Secretariat. He's the deputy treasurer of the NRM, and you can see it from his color, look, and the way he sounds. Good morning. Very good morning, and uh, happy uh, new year. Well, these figures, the opinion polls, <coughs> when the last one was issued, your NRM candidate did say that he was given a power of 50 watt percent. Now he believes that he will win the election by 80 percent. Isn't that just an expression of unwarranted bravado? Well, a very good morning to uh, viewers and uh, very happy uh, new, uh, new Year once again. Our sympathies and condolences to the family of our good friend, Norman Mao. Uh, the death of his uh, dear father, the late. Okay, not okay as uh, you will pardon us for this. Uh, now, Simon, I, I must say, surely by the time we go to the polls, I think uh, NRM should be talking about a landslide uh, in this uh, election, even uh, far much more than what the polls are showing now. Uh, why? Because uh, if you have been following our campaigns this time, uh, it's been actually as the president and our uh, flag bearer says it, it's more of a celebration. To him, it's more of a celebration this time. And as he puts it, it is a uh, uh, very, very nice thing to campaign uh, on the end and ticket. I think I was going to ask you whether President Seveni was throwing an unnecessary show of bravado. I think in, in, you, in, in you, I am seeing an exaggerated show of bravado. No, it is the reality show. President Seveni shows one bravado, you must play that by the ten. NRM is uh, this time. Perhaps let me just put it to the independent political mm -hmm. commentator to see whether he has got a view that is perhaps contrary to yours. Um, the opinion polls indicate that they, in fact, they are unanimous so far that there will not be a second round as many Ugandans expected that President Seveni will win, albeit with a lower percentage than he has previously, <coughs> but certainly will win outright with an over 51%. Is that a reflection of the realities of the ground as this campaign has been progressing in your view? No, I don't think that's a reflection of the ground. Uh, whoever will win will not win by landslide. Where a landslide starts from? Well, you could say 65 plus. I mean, 65 plus is a comfortable of leads. And if you have 65%, no, no. the chance is that. Uh, you create some legitimacy, some sense of legitimacy. Uh, it's something that uh, is not likely to happen in this election. So whoever will win is likely to win uh, between 50 to 60 percent. And uh, what you see now, all this kind of so mobilizing people, is to create a sense of we are winning. Such that even if it is 57 percent, even if it is 52 percent, chances of people believing that they were rigged will have that mindset in the people's mind. So what you're seeing now, uh, the opinion... I don't get you, uh, Henry. Yeah. Who? Uh, what I'm saying is that who, who will win? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, who... From, from the polls, yeah. the NRM is in the lead. Correct. Does that appear contrary to what you know in the field? No, to what I know in the field is that uh, it appears contrary uh, to the field. Um, the three leading candidates are putting up a big sign. Um, and if uh, President Museveni may have a lead, it may not go up to 60% or 80% like uh, that. Like would, uh, would you say the same about, say, candidate Amama Bawazi? <coughs> that, uh, uh, that candidate Amama Bawazi is in the lead, but certainly he may not pick even 60%. I would say I would say would not pick 60%. Or would you say I that even Amama Bawazi is in the lead? Yeah, I would not say he's in the lead. Would you say the same of Dr. Kisa Um, Dr. Kisa VCJ is... Um, is fairly in the lead. He's fairly in the lead. He's, he's fairly competing. I mean, uh, he has a consolidated base. 
which is reliable to him. And unlike Honorable Mbabazi, um, his speculative base of support is, is a pick some from the NRM, pick this way, pick, pick moderates this way, from this way, and that is not materializing, that is not being visible mm. within, within the political, uh, within the politics. You don't see it coming up. We're told that about 70% of the NRM support, which is a reliable power base, is that of the rural folk, especially the women. Well, they could support him uh, in their hearts, but they cannot translate that into politics. I think that is one thing that uh, Honorable Bumbabazi has not yet uh, demonstrated, that uh, his support within the NRM can translate into political support, can translate into, into, into votes, can translate into a political team. I think you could see and see his, his political team came very late and it had a lot of consultation. So that speculative idea that people had. Yeah, Even now, there's quite a lot of petty fogging and uh, whatever. But now, turning to Mr. Kenneth Omona here, who is, uh, well, by position, is a deputy treasurer. But I think many people would prefer to regard him as one of the behind the scenes facilitators of the political landscape in front of the NRM, especially in the eastern part of the country. We are told that President Museveni is currently enjoying a very good lead <coughs> in um, the west, in the north, and in the east. Is that true? Um, I, I, I must say, uh, uh, I, uh, from the start, what I'm asking whether the Pope is Catholic to a bishop, so that <laughs> the the support of the NRM is only increasing. How and uh, how is it increasing? Actually, would you say? So? I think uh, what you want to say precisely was that because I think you have to think about it. Uh, some of the things are really obvious. Uh, probably. Uh, you wanted to say uh, uh, Dr. Kiza Besige to, uh, is the leading opposition in the polls now. But really not leading, not leading really, by all basic uh, uh, measures. But let me say, our support in the countryside, yes, in all those regions actually, increasing just like you have said. And this is not out of uh, nothing. Uh, if you look at our message this time, we have been very, very open and very honest for Ugandans. That yes, we are meeting right over there. Your message this time around, you have been open and honest to your government. What does that tell you about your openness and honesty in 2011? 20, what I'm saying so is that now Ugandans can clearly see. Ugandans can now clearly because this is about the perception. So, what, what are you talking about, uh, Kenneth? And make my How no, you become no, more no, honest no, or Ugandans no, have Uganda, become more visually paired? No, Ugandans now is clearly see what we mean. It was very difficult in the past to, to, uh, to let people, especially in the north and east, understand what you say, but it's very, very clear now. Why I'm what saying have so, you done to make them Yes, understand why I'm you? saying so is that That's uh, where my hope in is the previous country. elections, I, you know very well you had insecurity in the north and eastern part of the country, and the uh, people are desperate, and anyone who say would say anything to them uh, would simply think, uh, uh, would want to tag on to the suffering of the people there, and think they should be the source of hope uh, to the people. But with the prevailing peace that government of the NRM has now brought in the eastern Uganda, in the northern part of Uganda, including in Karamoja. People now have time to listen and actually trust the NRM. Now, this in the world insecurity there is a bigger problem that we face, and that's the problem of poverty. But you see, and the insecurity, you see, insecurity brings with it all sorts of social suffering. And poverty, of course, is on top of the dividends of insecurity, if you want to put it that way. Now that we have peace and stability, actually in the entire country, people are now setting it down to use the innovations and the policies that government is putting in place to enhance the household income. And this time, actually, the president now explains to the people that you see, actually, our campaign messages are now uh, in, two, in, two, in two parts. One is that the president now explains, we explain to the people what Uganda has been going through over these years and what the strength <coughs> of Uganda has been. That yes, we have had insecurity. Now that there's peace, we are now more united. And that we are united, we now have time to develop Uganda. And that now we are that we are developing, we now want to focus on household income. We now want to focus on the the improvement in household household income. And then explaining to the people innovation or other policies that we are now bringing in place to enable people increase the household income. Things like the funds for the women. Uh, things like innovation fund that we are bringing, the increase in the, the youth fund, 
Thank you very much. Now, thank you. you here. This so, one, when he starts uh, enumerating these things, you will not. No, uh, it, but let me just say this, Simon. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying you're going a lot, no, but you know how to get six points and split them into 48. Yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. No, but this is actually what you're going to need to know now. You argue the permutation. That's why. That's why. That's why, actually, if there are some areas now where, when this opposition uh, candidates tell people lies, they actually engage publicly. So the other day, I think Dr. Kiss the best again. Exchanging now directly with the, with, the, with the people in the rallies. People are saying, no, you are telling a lie. For instance, how do you call uh, uh, a nodding disease an Adam disease? How do you call hepatitis B an Adam disease? BCG, as a medical doctor, should have known. That actually, the learning disease, which is now, now actually called the doctor. Listen, you have had discussion no. with Dr. Bessie and no, the no, doctors from no, 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 you are doctor. Yes, this is what I want to tell you. Omona, that so Uganda you yes, have to have that no discussion, longer. but Ugandans 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 coming to you, Ugandans this no guy is talking about the opposition yeah, candidates telling lies to the populace. But we've seen the opposition candidates, and notably Bessie. Now I also saw Mamma uh, Mbavazi trying to play catch up. This team dilapidated health centers, which Ugandans go to and receive not much medical attention because of the decay in the system. When those were blocked out of their reach, they went and visited what would otherwise be school structures, many of them taking shelter from under trees or falling debris regarded as robust classrooms. Beyond that, they have gone to visit water points in Akasongona. You saw Bezige dipping his hand into a pool of stagnant water, which is then the source of livelihood for the people around that place. When we talk about the NRM promise that these homeowners and companies are talking about, and the reality that these opposition groups are beginning to expose to many Ugandans who never thought for their life, that, for example, hospital extra data is lying in the isn't that in one way also picking away from the NR and that support that otherwise has been believing in book statistics and rosy pictures painted in the press of Kampala? I think, I think it would um, have the potential if, if, it's, if it is it's, um, brought out in the magnitude of how it is. Um, the, 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 the two leading opposition candidates have had a, a leading message. Um, Which is? For Honorable Bombabazi, a peaceful transition. That has been his leading message. His other issues come secondary position. So he has had more time and defining his candidate on a peaceful transition of power. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. Vesje has had a leading message of liberating Uganda. The violence. This is time for liberating. Now, much as the people have not picked into these messages entirely, they continuously face these other problems. And they do not see or uh, the opposition has not been able to translate these problems into an action of political support. So they are talking about them. Yes, we all know about this. And this is where uh, uh, Seven is putting it on service delivery. That despite all these dilapidated hospitals, the water, the problems. At least they are there. They, you know, people do not make a connection. They see, they see Dr. VSJ talking about them as secondary, secondary items in his political agenda. So the mobilizing uh, ground, the mobilizing ground of Honorable Bombabas, a peaceful transition, has not been well elaborated, well developed, and people have not understood what exactly he means by peaceful transition. On the other hand, FDC and Dr. VSJ have put primary focus on liberating Uganda. So how Ugandans buy into this liberation agenda, and then you visit a hospital, it becomes, I mean, they're used to these things. They, they have to make a connection between that bad hospital and a decision of the president. So if they do not see that connection, the, the Ugandans are getting used to these things, and somehow they're not bothered by That's exactly problems. what now leads me to my next question to you, and my, perhaps it's also about the mode of communication and campaigning. What exactly are Ugandans waiting to hear that will sway their mind to relinquish Omona and go for Kasiate or relinquish Kasiate and go for Henry. What is it? What can one do? Do you have to put up a wonderful show on the podium and dance yourself back at Chini to show that you've got stamina? Must you get on the podium and start lambasting and blasting the failed this and failed the other? What exactly do does it? let's look at a guy standing in front of a podium? These crowds they've been talking about. I want to, and I hope that they are the same people who go to visit Museveni, who go to listen to Bessie, who go to listen to Amam Babazi. Because they must be the same people. Then they make their decision there. What is it that one can tell them and how that would sway them? One would need to know this is the problem. And it is a problem because of this. 
you must develop a, a, a position on that problem. If we do not have health facilities in this country, if the service delivery is poor, there must be a reason. And that reason is emanating from this government. And the solution is to change this government and have me there. And how am I going to do it better? Now, when you don't answer the how you're going to do it better, this idea of, I mean, you can't mobilize on problems. Everybody look at all these problems. Perhaps so, you know the problems so better than you. If they even know yeah, them. So you have to do one thing for you to reach out to the voter. Because you clearly, see, what does, what, yeah, because I mean, I keep asking, what does Messenger know about bad schools in Uganda? You don't know. Because I don't think he has ever paid school fees to his own child, bad school in Uganda. Maybe he's a parent in a I don't know whether he's a board member of a school or he has taken trouble to visit the school. Maybe, the maybe. Point, I, I, I wouldn't put it past the fact that he owns some schools. The point I want to say, <laughs> the point I want to say is that for you to penetrate the hearts of Ugandans, regardless of your problems, everybody is seeing the hospitals, the roads, what have you. But they, they began talking about them as, as, you know, this is Uganda. So for you to penetrate but as we, as we pass on the back to uh, Kenneth Mwana, looking at the NRM, campaign strategy and the way they're moving around stating their messages while the president seems on one hand to be going out you know guns blazing and going to every nook and corner i mean you saw him even doing a fast on fast of uh, the oh, yeah, january right. visiting churches and all sorts of things within a space of hours he had gone to a dozen churches and all that yet when we listen to the luminaries like Omon and all that they move around with the bravado of ah things are okay and all that they don't seem to be convincing but they are rather showing off that we have it maybe with this kind of attitude of give us if you want if you don't you leave but we shall win nonetheless do you get that sense when you listen to people like Omon and the others campaigning for president seven on the sidelines of the main campaign no i do i do get that sense also, that the the, the the president appears to be very aggressively looking for votes and trying and to they do and, and they they do. Do. And uh, many, many members of his team appear to get the situation deal done and they you know, move with him. I mean, if he's not in a district, the NRM is not campaigning in that district. I mean, I do, ideally, you'd expect them to be campaigning all over the place, to be looking for votes. And, and this man begins moving in the night, showing you that he's trying to reach out to everybody. So the team is assuring us that, oh, everything is deal done. We all have these guys are nothing. And so that's the kind of... of, of campaign that perhaps that also that's what gives president seven this whole notion of you know knowing that it is his victory because he actually personally and maybe to some extent his dear wife goes to look for that victory and these others are just you know you know they move with him as a crowd they they don't have these parallel structures are we right or are we speaking about something that we do not know because we you know for example the other week you were in the soga region and every the whole government and energy machinery was in ginger and during those two weeks, I could feel the presence. Since the president left Ginger, I have not seen the much messaging about the NRM. That is talking about the strategy, and uh, you know, every time in every competition, and every competition, there must be a review of strategies. You don't know what you do in the background. But let me just begin from. But you see, what you do in the background should affect me because look, look no, 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 I am a vote. Oh, oh, did you know that I am a registered voter? And, and I am NRM. up for grabs. You should. You have but all reasons to vote NRS. What that reasons? I, I mean, I hear you. That people are going to spend in the campaigns. You spend doing what? Well, well, that money is for what exactly? To okay. give voters. Actually, I have not even seen a shilling coming my way. Not even a hope that you promised to my household. You need to spend money now on Ugandans. We need to tell Ugandans the truth and give Ugandans hope, which they have uh, this time in the NRM. Now, but begin from what he says. I think in a broader sense, the opposition has no good message for Ugandans. Just like they say, I actually don't see any serious message to Ugandans from those opposition. You talk about the message of uh, transition. Transition from what? We are only hoping to transition from backward. We are transitioning from backwardness into some different form of society. But for how long, Kenneth, are you going to talk uh, about talk backward about transition yeah. into middle? I mean, we well, had that message in 1986. Actually, no, we, have we had the same in 1996. But, uh, we had the same in 2001. I don't want to lose my point. I don't want to lose my point. Coming on to uh, 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 I think his message from what I see is just about change, and the change is that he wants to be president also. I think that's my life. That's what's the message. Basically, has told Uganda the same thing over years. Uh, but Kenneth, Kenneth, do you realize that as the end, does it ever occur oh, to you me, where me, you sit okay, that there are certain me, things you've been unable to deliver to Ugandans as the NRM? Uh, Whereas we have all these I, grand, wonderful plans, but there are certain things you, that you I have failed. I don't want to miss my point here. I told you from the beginning 
Kenneth, let's, let's appreciate that as a moderator, I must put you into a certain direction yes. where and, you have to deliver and, your presentation. And I should yes. also give you exactly what, yes. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what I put you from the beginning. That as NRM, we have admitted to Ugandans things that we have not been able to do over these years. Mm -hmm. We have admitted and we have also explained to Ugandans why we have not been able to do that. Mm -hmm. Now, in our message, as we actually, if you have been following, we have been telling Ugandans that, yes, the need for Ugandans, in fact, the first need that Ugandans had was first of all peace and security. That was the first one, Simon. And now that you have attended that, okay, that we have been looking at areas of development. Okay, we have put in a lot into infrastructure development. These are the productive areas of the economy, and there is no country in the world that has developed from nothing. But we have also now said yes. Now that we have put so much in infrastructure, we now have to look at the quality of services from those infrastructure. Absolutely. We have admitted that we have constructed so many hospitals. We have constructed so many health facilities. We now want to have them function. We have admitted Ugandans. Why are we doing this? We have told Ugandans, we as NRM, we prioritize. Kenneth, we you know that no man, man can, can do better than his best. Yes. When you admit for right. when you admit being your best, yes. and that is your best, and someone comes and says, I can do better than their best. Yeah, why do you think you gonna should not give can those ones a chance to go something? and do exactly. better than the best that they must be? In fact, I think for lack of better one. You should have said these other people are just lamenting. He said it rightly that Ugandans want to know when you say yes, this is not done, but also tell them how can this be done. For instance, mm -hmm. I saw Dr. Kisabis going to scoop water as if this is a strange thing in Uganda here. Uganda actually about 18 percent of the surface land area of Uganda is covered by water. This exists. This water, we should not use this water for both consumption and production. Now, I thought. Dr. Kizabesi will tell Ugandans that first of all, to have water alone is a blessing. What you can only do is that use this water safely for drinking. Just boiling water makes water safe for drinking. And now, if, if Dr. Kizabesi thinks Ugandans are wanting to be, tell them to boil water when it becomes present, no. Do you think. He possibly was saying that you can do better than fetching water from a puddle person. of uh, stagnant water no. into gravity flowing no, pipe to water. Which into is happening. It is happening in these high, uh, hilly areas. In Kalchora and Elgon, we are using gravity water. In, in the Chigezi, Renzori, we are tapping into that. I think, by and large, some of these fellows are so ignorant about Uganda. But let me say what I have just said. This and as we conclude, yes, I must say. Yes. I think many of these people of recent have been exposed. And that's why this time, many of them actually, yes, Kisa basically they had the support base. We can use this, which is very confusing. Uh, Babazi, who's actually entire NRM, I think. May took on a very miscalculated political scheme for her, which has failed. But let me say this in conclusion uh -huh. uh, Ugandans now have seen that these other people in the position, in fact, they have been exposed. Do you know what I said? How can I trust you speak on behalf of Ugandans? Yes, yes, I mean, Ugandans. No, 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 if I Uganda's problem, that's listen, that's if Uganda's problem then. was President Museveni and NRS, why could when they agree, two leaders, the two of them, why did they agree that now let's form a force to push away President Museveni and NRM and we save you? Yeah, that is a debate of yesterday, as I must not say. Political self-interest uh -huh. of mm -hmm. taking up power. Well, I am I am happy by the way he ignores the other five presidential Simon. candidates Simon. as if they don't Simon. exist. But just, just, as we just, just on, 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 on the agenda and the transition mm. um, uh, message of Honorable Bowers. I think his main message, it's a different question whether he has explained that to him, is that to consolidate the achievements of the NRM, yeah. you must respond to demands of political forms. And that is... And at the heart of political reforms is a peaceful transition from President Museveni, right. who has been there for 30 years, to another leader to show this That's world as a country. So, so now, so, 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 if, if you are talking about that transition, transition, the political reforms will include discussing the NRM and how it has been fused with the state and how you're going to, to free up and create political organizations that will not have any interference with other, with other other political activities. Really so, so if 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 that is and that is to me his his message of a political transition, and whether he's explained that to Ugandans is another question. Because what has now been portrayed is that we need to have this kind of handover from one generation to the other. 
and the NLM as a liberation yeah, so when you look at the two men uh, between Museven and Bowers, I don't see a generation handover but now as we conclude I just ask one last question these figures that we started with they are for barometer reports the you know the research by research world international all those that were carried out in 2015 in your view and as conclusively as you can put it with the way the campaigns have been progressing do you see a similar trajectory of the figures, or do we see a drop, especially on the NRM side? Well, I see a similar projection of this, and uh, purposely because of two main factors. Mm. Um, the NRM is, 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 is becoming very aggressive. They are trying to prepare for a victory that will have legitimacy. So they are moving out and reaching out to so many people. Mm. And on the other hand, the, 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 the two leading opposition candidates appear to come the camps appear to have lost this 50 plus one ah, right. Right, so yes. they are simply into the campaign and so you don't see that 50 plus one so many of their supporters are seemingly withdrawing and think okay it's a good uh, it's it's gone case. Case. It's gone case and what have you so that trajectory is likely to continue it may also be manipulated but it's likely to continue well, of conclusion, a better note there, we've heard it from a political pundit, so one, of course, in the thick and knee-deep into the NRM operations. That's Dr. Kenneth Omona, who is the deputy treasurer of the NRM, and Mr. Henry Kasacha, who is referred to as an independent political commentator. I do not know whether he has lived up to my initial description of being uh, an NRM leading, leading independent political commentator, but you will make your choice, certainly. I'm sure with yeah. more interactions, as we've had on this show, he'll be able yeah. to expect Expose himself to them. All the reasons to, all the reasons to lean. Aha, uh -huh, there we have. Why, why would I lean? Let's take a short one and be done with Simon says. <laughs>
are slowly swaying away from the initial message. Perhaps that's as a result of the opinion polls indicating as such. Others are simply going out all out, guns blazing and firing from all cylinders to ensure that they consolidate what they seem to have and enjoy in the opinion polls in as much as they believe it's on the lower side. So either way, if you believe that an opinion poll has not treated you fairly, then maybe you may need also to conduct your very own See how much you can influence it to favor you and convince Ugandans to believe that in fact that poll of yours holds more credibility than the one that puts you in a more unfavorable position. But that, as it may, we can only wait, sit back, watch the candidates as they outdo themselves, as we put on the table our own needs as a country and see who amongst them would best represent our aspirations and our need for development. Have a good morning. Thank <laughs> you.